Welcome back. In the previous tutorial, we learned how to read from an Excel file, any particular tab, and we'd read the whole thing as a, basically a CSV file. It would read it, convert it to a data frame, or actually a tibble. We're going to keep it as tibble this time, but in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to actually choose the actual tab and create a range of where you want to read the data. A lot of times in Excel, you'll have data that's located in all kinds of various places on that actual sheet. But if we want a very specific range to read from all the time, let's go ahead and provide that. I'll show you how to do that here in under five minutes. Before we get there though, I appreciate if you guys would like this video and if you can subscribe even better. But ultimately, if you can share the video and tell the world that I exist, that would help my channel out. I appreciate that. I genuinely do appreciate that. And I have a Discord channel too that I'll link in the descriptions. All right, under five minutes, here's the task. We have a file called book1.xlsx. I have changed my tabs down here. If you followed the last tutorial, I moved them. I moved them back. So I have named sheet on the second tab over. And as you can see, I have things moved around a little bit. I actually dragged a bunch of my data down here. So I don't care about this A1, right? That's not what I want to look for every day. Every day when I get this sheet from the boss, it comes in and it's always the data that I want is D10 through if I drag and dr drag this over through G17. So D10 to G17. Simple as that. That's the only data I want for my analysis, right? All right, so we've got that figured out. Now look how simple this is going to be. It's very simple. At our library that we just um, installed called read XL, XL, command enter on that. And remember, if you didn't add that, just install read XL. Okay, so my data is equal to, and we'll just say read underscore Excel. And because of my Excel file is in the project directory path, I can just do BOO, hit tab twice, and it auto populates for me, book1.xlsx, that's fine. It's in the base directory or the root directory, whatever you want to call it. Now we want to name that tab though, so let's just go ahead and call it um, sheet equals, and the name of the sheet was, named sheet one, I believe. Let's double check that. Oh, just plain named sheet, as you can see down below. So going back, name sheet. So that's cool. Let's do that. And I'll show you what happens is you will have 16 observations of seven variables, which doesn't make sense, right? So there's no headers. And look at this mess that we have. Now it did capture our data down here, but that's not what we wanted, right? We didn't want that 333 as a header. So even if I did uh, column names equals false, it still wouldn't have been the correct thing. So fix that. And we're going to fix that easily by just adding, I'll do a comma. In fact, let's keep this nice and neat, comma, and we'll do range equals. And then in quotes, we will simply do, what did I say, D10 colon G17. Simple as that. Command enter. And let's see what that did. Seven observations of four variables. Already looking better. Boom. There we go. We have a, well, we have, all right, it starts with B. It looks like we have a header there. So let's fix that real quick. Let's fix that real quick. So looking back at the Excel sheet, there is no header. Ah, if we did have one, we'd have it here and we could set the range to that but then the header would be proper, right? So we could do that. We can just say letter, number, blank, um, words, whatever we want. Control S on that, go back, rerun, rerun this line, and now we should have uh, a little bit better header or not. What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Letter, Control S. Oh, I know what we did wrong. I didn't actually change the range. So it's D9 now, D9. So we can change that to D9, not D nice, D9. I don't know if you get that joke, anybody. All right, run that. We have eight observations. Here we go. And now we have our headers up there. That's fine and dandy. Now, if we didn't want to include headers and we did keep the D10 on there, we would just have to have another parameter, a final parameter of column names equals false. But now that we have a header, we don't need to do that. So let's just go ahead and keep it the way it was and keep this as D9, and we are good to go. So again, not bad at all, very easy. 
It's a simple way to bring the data in. You're always going to get Excel files if you're in some sort of big corporate world. I promise you that. It'd be nice if you can automate that. This is good for the business user to bring in some data and manipulate it and send it back into Excel. It's good for data scientists. It's good for data enthusiasts. If you find these little tutorials helpful, I want to kind of keep this one short. Subscribe and share this with the world for me, and I will see you guys on the next one.